Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about how to expand the basic MOSFET current mirror uh, in order to allow for multiple outputs. And it is not uncommon to use this technique in IC circuit design, uh, whereas we generate a reference current somewhere in our circuit, and then we keep taking off branches uh, of that current and mirroring it uh, to bias different portions of the circuit. And so, uh, very simply, I have put my, uh, my reference current generated by resistor R. Uh, it uh, feeds through transistor M1, or it, it goes through the drain of transistor M1, gets mirrored into M2, right? so that, that's no different from the basic current mirror we have seen so far, where my I2 current is basically equal to uh, the reference current. Uh, multiply times the uh, aspect ratio, the ratio of aspect ratios, if you will, uh, the width over length of transistor 2 to the width over length of transistor 1. So for same um, transistors of the same size, there will be the exact same current I ref flowing through both of them. And now some, kind, some um, section of my circuit could be connected to the drain of I2 uh, and will be biased by I2. Uh, then the same current will appear through I3, because it's part of the same mirror. And the same thing applies to I3, whereas um, it is equal to I ref times width over length of transistor 3 divided by width over length of transistor 1. And uh, because of the connection between um, I th M3 and M4, the same current that flows through the drain of transistor M3, which is missing its, uh, its source indicator there, will flow through transistor M4, which is a PMOS transistor. But since both drains are connected, this will be I4. Again, notice that the current going to the gates of those transistors is equal to zero. Same thing over here. The current going to the gates is equal to zero. That's why I2 is equal to um, I ref. Um, for the same reason, I3 will be equal to I4 because there's no current going through the other branch that goes to the gates of M1, M4, and M5. And so um, I will have M4 or I4 being equal to I3. Um, and then finally, uh, I5. will be a mirror of I4, and so I5 will basically be equal to I4 times width over length of transistor 5 divided by width over length of transistor 4. And you can see how uh, this could keep expanding. Now, uh, there are some conditions that need to be met in order for this circuit to operate as intended. Uh, for one thing, we need for all of those transistors to be in saturation. Uh, for the transistors that have the diode connections, we know they're going to be forced into saturation just because of the connection. Uh, for example, in the case of M1, we have that VDS is going to be equal to VGS, and therefore is greater than VGS minus VT, just, um, just by design. Uh, but for M2 and M5 uh, and M3, that's not necessarily the case, and so we're going to need to meet the condition uh, so to ensure... All transistors are, saturate, are in saturation. We need the following conditions uh, for um, VD2 and VD3. Basically, the drain voltages of uh, transistors M2 and M3, we need those to be greater than or equal to uh, minus VSS plus uh, VGS1 minus VT, or basically VOV1, the overdrive voltage of transistor 1. And that's just another way of stating that VDS must be greater than or equal to VGS minus VT. It's just that instead of, um, of saying VDS, we're saying VD, and we are referring it to the, the source uh, voltage, which is connected to minus VSS. Uh, but it's the same equation that we've seen so far. In the case of M5, since it's a PMOS transistor, uh, 
the equation is uh, slightly different. We will need BD5 to be less than or equal to uh, BDD minus and the absolute value of the, of the overdrive voltage of uh, transistor 5. Uh, which should be the same as the one for transistor 4, since, again, they're both connected to the same VDS. Um, if they're all matched, they all have the same VT. Anyway, so we, we will need those conditions to be met for the circuit to operate as intended. Uh, something to notice uh, is that uh, the different possible configurations, right, we can build the current sources or the current mirrors using NMOS transistors like M1, M2, M3, or PMOS transistors like M4 and M5. Uh, in the case of NMOS transistors, we are uh, sinking current from the circuit. So we say um, let me just say, you know, as a note, M2 is sinking current into the negative supply. So basically, uh, the way we will represent that graphically is this is my I2 uh, going to negative VSS. And whatever circuit I connect to it, um, which I'm going to represent just with a load. Right. Basically, I am um, sinking current from the circuit. This is my load which will be connected to ground, will be connected to VDD. Let's assume it's connected to VDD. So it becomes a little bit more obvious what we mean by sinking current. So here I will have my load connected to VDD. And we say that current source is sinking a current I2 into VSS, whereas in the case of uh, the PMOS transistor M5, we say it is sourcing current uh, from VDD because it is pushing the current out to the load. And so anything that was connected uh, to it will look something like this. So we will have my, I will have my VDD. Um, my current source I5, and then my load, which again could be connected to ground or could be connected to negative VSS. But in essence, I will be um, sourcing current I5. That's pretty standard terminology, so we want to be using it. Sinking current, sourcing current. Uh, another thing to note about these circuits um, is again, we can uh, alter the aspect ratio of the different transistors in order to create multiples of the reference current in different parts of the circuit. We don't always need all the um, stages in a circuit to be biased to the same current. So that's a useful feature. Uh, but then also notice that as opposed to the BJT current mirror, uh, where uh, the more transistors, the more stages you added, um, you will be loading your reference current. In the case of the MOSFET, the loading effect is um, is not as bad simply because the currents going into the gates are equal to zero. And so it doesn't suffer from the, the loading, the susceptibility to loading effects that the BJT mirror had. So we'll make a note to that. Another note. Um, less susceptible. to loading effects um, due to no gate current. Now, the reason why I say it's less susceptible and I don't just say uh, it's completely impervious or, or it doesn't get affected by loading, it's because there are other things to consider, not just the gate current, there is, you know, uh, there are load capacitances and things like that, which will also affect the performance of the circuit. But at least we don't have to account for the effect of the base current, uh, basically taking away accuracy as we increase the number of stages. And that's it for the MOSFET with multiple um, outputs. Thank you.